Good morning. I'm higher vibrations and so are you. You know, the reason I'm, I'm so interested in this ascension symptom thing is that so many of us have been having these experiences for a lot longer than we think. And in my experience, for a long time, those who I was seeking to help me figure out what these symptoms were about, though they were unable to actually diagnose me with anything, would often give me more than one different prescription of medication to, to mask these symptoms, these experiences, just considering them unpleasant. So they, we need to make them go away. But what are they? You know, anyway, so a few years ago, I discovered it. I found the word. I found that I found so many people are going through the same thing that I am. This, you know, Ear ringing thing can off, often be called tentinitis, but that's, that means you're losing your hearing. Over the course of the past five years, my hearing ability has increased. You know, and that was my first real, you know, the ear ringing thing that was pretty consistent in March 2020. Pretty much the entire month, my ears, and they still are. However, I, I've just gotten more accustomed to it. And there's an element of fear that's associated with these symptoms if we think it's something different. Most of us, at least me, <laughs> would go to that, there's something wrong with me. I, I this, is, this might be an emergency kind of a thing. And so we have God who is full and everything that is love, like the truest, most purest love, right? And the opposite of God is fear. And our experience towards ascension is closer and closer to that love. And so if something can be put in there to inspire even the slightest amount of fear, it can pull us away from our ascension experience, at least enough that there's a bit of a tug of war occurring there. Now, I'm not saying if you are having some kind of symptom that feels like it should have, have medical attention that you shouldn't do so. I'm not saying that. It is good to go see your doctor. It's good to get full blood work checkup, make sure everything's good and your levels are right. And, you know, all of us, it seems we are having some kind of, you know, need for extra certain kind of vitamin here and there. So it's not a bad thing to do that at all. It's a good thing. And so I started sp spending more time or uh, paying more attention to what ascension symptoms are happening. And through this portal, through this YouTube channel, I've connected with so many of you who are going through the identical experiences. And that is beautiful and validating. And, and it helps me to trust the messages I've been getting anyway. So a lot of us are having some real struggles with our sleep right now. For me, it's changed. So for a while, I was having like loads of sleep and waking up tired, like I needed to take a nap from my, my sleep. And then also massive periods on and off over the past few months of, of insomnia, where I'm just, I'm exhausted all day long, like that real profound, almost zombie-like exhaustion. And as soon as it was bedtime, I was just, it wasn't like the insomnia that you kind of hear about. It would, it would be like, I'm just excited to be awake now, you know? And, and it, it just, when there was an energizing experience there. And that is a true thing, by the way. When the, when the world goes to, goes to a place of rest in their sleep, there's less frequency disruption. It, the, the, Think of it as though everything in front of us back and forth, up and down in every angle are these, these, these streams of energy coming and going between places. And as people go to sleep, they, they, their streams kind of slow too. And not just those that we walk and talk with on this plane, but, but all. And so when people go to sleep, it's easier to receive. You can still receive at all times, but later in the day, in the evening and night, when people are starting to slow down, shut down and be done from work and going to sleep, they, they take away from the disruptions is what I'm saying. And that's why that insomnia like state was so such a thing for me anyway. And it will be again, I'm sure it, it is every night a little bit at the very least. But then now there's these experiences where we're waking abruptly multiple times throughout the night, fully engaged in this school, this training, 
that we're experiencing in this astral experience. And it's, it's beautiful, but it has its own kind of exhaustion because we're using a different muscle than, than, than we're perhaps as familiar with from other ways, you know. And then also you're getting hot, cold flashes all the night long too, you know, before you, you, you can, it's difficult to maintain a ha happy temperature. And speaking of temperature, my core temperature has been slowly dropping for, for at least two years. It's very interesting where I am like happy and content in my temperature. My core temperature t tends to run a couple of degrees cooler than is typical. Um, also, uh, this weird appetite thing, you know, like I, I've been going through for quite a while. I've been, I used, I was a carnivore before and I, I pulled away slowly a little bit at a time as my body started to reject meat, certain kinds of meat at first. And it slowly turned into all meat. And you know, that's, I'm not, just, again, this is none of this stuff is a suggestion. This is just what happened to me. And in the, in that time, I started to eat more and more fresh foods, live foods. A lot of times I wasn't even cooking those foods. And, to, and then it turned into juices and I really didn't want to eat solid foods. And it goes back and forth, except I don't go back to the meat. A lot of people have recently, their body has called them to do it and that's okay. Like your body needs it right now, then that's what it needs. But, you know, and not to feel any kind of way about that. Just listen to your body. Your body knows. Your body's telling you what to eat and what not to eat. We're eating foods that we're not accustomed to eating and not sure why we're doing it, but we're craving it, so we do. And also the foods that we are familiar with eating and, and spent much of our lives loving are now things that are distasteful to us and just, we have no desire. It's really interesting, you know, and, and a lot of fasting stuff has been happening for me and a lot of people that I've talked to just not on purpose, just all of a sudden... It seems, you know, more and more you skip meals and pretty soon you're finding yourself thinking, when was the last time that I ate? And um, it's not that, you know, I, I'm still, we'll, we'll be drinking the teas or the juices or even both. And lots and lots of water, by the way. Don't forget to drink plenty of water. But then, you know, see, looking back and there have been cases where I've been like, wow, it's been a month. I haven't eaten anything solid, you know, and. When we do go through those things, I find for myself, it's very good to start real s simple to get back into food too, by the way. It's a slow, gradual thing. Lots of times just cooked rolled oats and that's it. And that's good. That's a good little transitional back into some solidness or a banana. Um, anyway, and then um, on top of that, then there's also these these periods of like not fasting at all. Like... You know, I've just recently gone through this thing where my body's just like hungry, you know, and I'm just not used to that. I'm really not like I I tend to, to fast for like 18 hours a day. I'll skip breakfast and lunch just because my body doesn't want it, you know, and then, you know, I'll eat in the evening. And 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 uh, anyway, I I've been waking up hungry <laughs> the past little bit here. It's been strange, you know, so I'm giving my body the calories that it wants, you know, and, and, and allowing that to happen. Cause again, we're listening to our bodies. Our bodies are, are, are asking us and showing us what to do. Also muscular, uh, uh, like flicking and stuff, like just weird, like the, for a long time it was happening on the eye and it took me down here and, and then it moved over to this side, the twitching went down here and, and like in, on the third eye twitches and just twitch to twitch. Well, now it's also turning into like muscle groups where just constant twitching. It's really bizarre, but it feels like I'm shaking something out and and it, I, I feel like that's what it is specifically because it's around the time that we'll get the core vibrational stuff. Uh, belly button like discomfort is really common right now. Um, some people reported it felt like an electrical charge. Um, also in the neck at uh, the same time for, for, um, a couple, two different people told me that. Um, I'm, my experience is mostly, however, the back of the, of the neck, a little bit of electrical, like electricity not bad. It's just, well, what was that? But then the belly button and 
The belly button is also where that main space is when the, we have those vibrations, right, that I was talking about that often coincide with that, is that the vibrations or this vibration core thing that we're, we're transmuting all this energy and sending it up and out, all these little stagnant pockets of things that were disharmonious to this life experience that we're all in have been kind of stuck and stagnant in these in various places throughout this planet and now it's time for them to go and they need help they need help because they're stuck and so what we're doing is we're raising our vibrational frequency space and meditation and quietness and and in that zero point space is that we're then a beautiful and perfect conduit of love and we we allow this energy to have an avenue out it's not for us to experience. It's not for us to, because th with them, often they bring a story. They bring a story of why the pain is there. And so it's okay if you'd like to look at the story, but remember, it's not yours. It's not yours to own. It's not yours to figure out. Because when we do that, we're holding it in judgment. We hold something in judgment. We're holding it in place. We're, we're imprisoning it in the place that it is. And so it's not for us to do. It's simply to acknowledge it without judgment and to release. Yes, you existed. You happened. And I thank you for your service. Your job is done now. Goodbye. And to send it with love. And as all that vibrational core stuff up through is happening, that's what's going on. And that's why we get these flashes of things. A lot of people that I've talked to have have misunderstood that perhaps a little bit as a as what was more of a psychic attack. And it's it's not intended to be that way. It's for us to acknowledge without judgment and to release. But to, but to remember also, send it with love. Give it the boost that it needs to get there. And the love is how it's done. And then as we continue on and have these weird like experiences where our, our throat chakra is being activated. So there's a lot of throat and mouth related issues going on right now. Constantly clearing of the throat when you're telling your truth. You know, the, the weird flicking and pressure and pokey and flicky sounds that are in the ears and the sinuses right now. That tenderness of the third eye as it starts to be able to see and blanket the, the bright sun for the first time in a long time. Um, electrical um, bursts throughout our body and those just slight little feelings. That's us turning things on. You know, for this the longest time we've been told that the majority of our DNA is something they call junk DNA. And that DNA is not junk. It was just laid into a place of slumber, into hibernation. It was dormant DNA. And now as we're getting these light codes and the solar flares and everything that's going on right now, those things, those places, we've made it to a point where we're allowed to use those tools now. We are in a better place to do it responsibly. And so now those, those tools are turning on, that DNA. And through that, the activations and stuff, there's going to be a little bit of discomfort. and But not all of the, the ascension symptoms are exactly physical either, are they? They're understanding. They're being able to see the light orbs, see the flickers, realize you're seeing more of a color spectrum than you knew was a thing. You know, being able to see the aura around more than what you saw before. To be able to see and understand certain things. These are all, these are all symptoms of what we're calling ascension. And as we move up and through, we are almost t touching the violet seventh dimensional frequency space. And it's going to keep coming and it's going to keep sh shifting and changing. We're going to notice our, the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet are itchy and, and they feel almost crampy as the, as those chakras activate again. The chakras on our, on our temples are, are going to start to activate again soon as well. The feeling of the halo around your head, not so much painful, but just an unexpected experience enough that we kind of decide to call it painful 
or uncomfortable. Things that we're not familiar with or what we have forgotten seems uncomfortable. But that's only because we're, we've gotten used to this other way of being. Being limited in the way that we have for so long was horrible. But we were so used to it that many of us have spent some time protecting that way of life. The identity of self, your name, your titles. You know, brother, sister, mother, father, son, daughter, friend, you know, co-worker, all those different things, daddy, mommy, all of our titles, and then also the things that we do, writer, sketcher, you know, uh, just the different, those are all titles and those are all part of this narrative. And that narrative, the more that we own and hold on to the more that it anchors us in a in that lower dimensional space we've been spending so much time of our existence for so long that space that we're pulling from right now and so as we let go of each part of our identity a little bit it doesn't change how we are or who we are it's just those titles were another way of keeping you connected to the matrix so as you were working on, on this journey, so am I. You are not alone. We are doing this together. As long as you remember that you are love and that you are loved, that you are one of us. You are one of the many of the so, so many that raised their hand when volunteers were asked for. And of all of those many countless individual energy spaces, you, you are picked because you are the most prepared. You got this. We've ascended worlds before. That's why we're so familiar to one another. Thank you for your service. We got this. I'm sending you so much love. And also, uh, we will be having a live Zoom on Monday, the 4th, on the 4-4 portal at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The uh, link to that will be in the description as well as in the comments. I hope to see you there. It is free of charge and will not be recorded or aired anywhere. Thank you. Aho blessings. <laughs>